Hey, I'm Mark Romanek, and you're watching Fishing 411. We're on the Detroit River chasing down some spring walleyes. Stick around, because the word is the bite's been very good. There's a fish. It's just a little eater here, Jake. This is a classic Detroit River eating size fish. There you Thank go. Thank you, son. All right. Nice fish, Dad. Well, it's a good start. The sun's barely above the horizon. And we've got <laughs> a Detroit River walleye. Let me take a look here, see if I can get him unhooked here. That's the object of our affections. A few walleyes, good for the tank here. That one's an eater. I think the word might be out a little bit on my hot spot. If you like walleye fishing, you like you know river jigging in the spring, it's pretty hard to beat the Detroit River, but you're not gonna have it to yourself. This is one of the most popular fisheries in the Midwest, and when you come here, you can expect crowds. It's just part of the deal. It's actually part of the atmosphere, the way I look at it. Ooh, I just missed one. And uh, when you're fishing in groups of boats close enough that you can talk to people, and uh, see them catching fish, it's actually a lot of fun. It's like a big party on the Detroit River. So there's two different ways to control electric trolling motors. This XI-5 that we have up here on the bow, is there's a hand control like I have here, and there's a foot control. I like using the hand control when we're one rod jigging. We're actually in Canada today, so you're only allowed one rod. When you're two rod jigging, the foot control is a great way, great fish, is a great way to stay vertical. Man, this one just thumped it. <laughs> you got one, Jake? Nice fish, too. Looks like a good fish. Nice fish, Dad. Looks like a very nice That's a great way to start the morning off. Look at that. Oh, that's a big fish, Jake. Eh? Scope him. I got him in the bucket for you there, young man. Great fish, Dad. Look at that. That's a great way to start off the morning. A five, six pound fish to start off the day. And look at that. That jig is just gone. You know, that's the reason why you want to have two people in the boat with you. When we're fishing in a crowd like we are today, I caught this fish, my dad netted it for me, and then he immediately jumped on the electric motor. That's going to keep you fishing longer, and you're going to be able to dodge all these boats that are out here. But man, what a great fish. We're going to get this girl back. So the whole key of being an effective vertical jigger is staying vertical, exactly what it's called. When you stay vertical, you maintain contact with the bottom. When you maintain contact with the bottom, you're where the fish are, and you're gonna get a few more fish. Well, we've had a very short drift here. In fact, quite honestly, the area that we're actually catching fish in is probably no more than about 100 yards. And so what we're doing is we're drifting down with the current, vertical jigging, using the electric motor for boat control, and then we got to idle back up again, set up and do exactly the same drift again. Because we've got lots of boats here, uh, we can't really run back up quickly anyway. Um, we've got a courtesy to the other boats here. We're just kind of slowly idling back up and then drifting back down. It's pretty much what everybody else is doing. And it's amazing how many boats can fish in this small area and all be effective. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Jaker's yeah. keeping me busy here this running the landing so net fun. today. Now, when some people think about April, they think about April and the D, and they think about baseball. 
As much as I love baseball, oh, that's man, I tell you. As much as I love baseball, when I think of April, I think of these big toad walleyes. Right here in the Detroit River. Get them, Dad. There you go. That's another <laughs> good one. You got it going on today, Jake. Man, that's that's awesome. a little stud. Man, look at that fish. That's another gorgeous Detroit River walleye. You know, the Stretcher River that we're fishing today is an area called the Pencil Buoys. Now, this is on the Ontario side of Canada. And what it is, it's on the tip of Fighting Island. On one side, it splits off to the Livingston Channel, and on the other side is the U.S. Shipping Channel. And what that does is it's a great spawning area for these big females like this. Man, I love it. Our Detroit River walleye fishing adventure was set in the middle of April. Pretty much the entire month of April is good fishing, but prime time is about the 7th of April till about the 20th of April. If you come between those dates, you're almost guaranteed to find good numbers of fish here in the river. The jig cadence is really important. It's one of those things that you really have to pay attention to. When you got multiple guys fishing in the boat, everyone's gonna have their own special style jig cadence. Each day is a little bit different, and one guy might have the hot hand. When that guy has the hot hand, you really need to pay attention to what his jig cadence is and try to duplicate that as well as possible. When I lift up, I actually pause the jig about six inches off bottom. I hold it there for a couple seconds, and then I let it back down and I touch bottom so I know I'm in contact with bottom. A lot of my fish are coming on that pause. It makes for a lot of fun because they absolutely hammer it when you feel that on the straight, tight line. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Man, you just slumped the dude, Dad. Oh my goodness. Another great fish. That's good fish, though. They're all good fish. You got the hot <laughs> hand today, Jake. Very much so. I feel like the all-time net man here. Jump up on the electric motor, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do some boat control here for a while. Yeah, that's another gorgeous fish. That's a great eater-sized fish, but we're gonna let fish go today. Man, that's a nice male. There's fish. Oh, that's a big one, too. This one is in shallow water. Most of what we've been doing today has been a little bit deeper water. But I got up on top of the flat here, and this is actually the water where these fish are spawning. And this is a female here. Acres, I'm going to need it. That's, that's a stud right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. I almost farmed them for you, Dad. <laughs> that, wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been good, That dude. wouldn't have been good. That that's wouldn't have been good. Fish. Stop right there. That is a beautiful fish. <laughs> Another great fish. This one isn't as big as my dad's. We're still sending her back. I was starting to think like the kid was gonna show me up here today. He's been red hot, and that's kind of how it goes sometimes with jigging. But the old man got even a little bit. <laughs> that's a beautiful fish, Jake. That's awesome, Dad. What a green female. She's going back. I'll get you back, sweetheart. Woo! You know, when it comes to vertical jigging in the Detroit River, they use a lot heavier jigs than maybe what you're used to fishing in other bodies of water. A light jig on the Detroit River is a half ounce, and I'm actually using a 5 8 ounce jig today. And the jig that I'm using is made by bait rigs. It's called the Oddball. And the reason I like it, it's a stand-up style. A traditional ball head jig works okay here, but what happens when that jig hits the bottom is it lays on its side, and then you're more likely to have the hook contact the bottom, you're more likely to snag. With a stand-up jig, it, keeps that hook point up off the bottom. And I believe that it reduces the snags. It also believe that it puts that hook up there so that when a fish does bite, you set the hook right into the roof of his mouth. We found it's an excellent jig. Again, it's the Oddball by Bait Rigs. The XI-5 motor guide, the electric motor that we're using, actually has both a foot control and it also has a key fob or a hand control. Um, I prefer the foot control, but I'm old school. I'm very used to a foot control. And it, what it does is it frees up both hands. Like for, for example, now we're in Ontario, so I can only fish one rod. But if we were on the Michigan side of the river, I'd actually be jigging with two rods. So I like the foot control. Now, Jake, on the other hand, has been using the key fob, and I'll let him talk a little bit about that. Um, but he seems to prefer that. 
So I like using the hand control when I'm one rod jigging. Like my dad was saying, we're in Ontario, so we're spending a lot of time and we can only jig one rod. So using a key fob is a really good way to keep yourself vertical. Both methods are very effective. It all comes down to personal preference. You know, the Detroit River is only about 30 miles long. It's one of the shorter rivers that you'll ever fish. And it's not exactly the most scenic either. Most of the river runs through some, uh, uh, let's just say, some heavy industrial areas. Uh, but it more makes up for what it lacks in scenery and high quality fishing. In fact, quite honestly, this may be the best walleye river fishing you're gonna find anywhere in North America. That one just thunked it. That's a big fish, Dad. Yeah. He's definitely, definitely staying down good. Oh, there oh. he is, I got my first look of him. Oh, 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 He's a stud here. That's a great well, fish. Look at that. Oh, come on. Come on over here closer. Oh, come on over here closer. Nice fish, Dad. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> nice fish. Well, we cannot complain about the quality of the fish that we're catching today in the Detroit River. These are all really, really high quality fish. Just beautiful. <laughs> now, if you get a chance to get down here and try out the Detroit River, you're gonna to wanna to do it in the month of April. The month of April is when the majority of the fish are caught. Now, they do catch fish here all the way through the month of May as well. But if you're looking for the big females like this one, the bigger fish, you definitely wanna be here in April. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour. Michigan's premier sports shows. One of the cool features from the Lowrance is the new Wi-Fi series and the Gen 3 Touch units. Now what I can do is I can use my iPad or my iPhone. Whether you have an Apple or an Android device, you can download this app called the GoFree app and you can display on your screen what's happening on your graph. Right next to me, I have my iPad and the Lowrance, and what happens on the Lowrance happens on the iPad. So it makes it really cool so you can have two screens and don't have to pay for two graphs. So how does this Wi-Fi help you in a real world situation? Being able to use your iPad or your cell phone to display the screen is really cool. Let me give you an example. If you're fishing on the Detroit River and you got a buddy at the back of the boat and you're up on the front of the boat, your buddy can have an iPad mounted to the back of the boat seeing everything that you're seeing up on the front of the boat. That makes it really cool. Your buddy can also go onto his iPad and he can save waypoints, he can zoom, he can do everything that I can do right here on this Gen 3 unit in my hand. So it makes it awesome for using two units on one graph. So water clarity plays a huge role in vertical jigging. Today we have pretty much ideal conditions. Now let me get up here, get vertical here for a second. We have pretty much ideal conditions. What you wanna look for is a little bit of stained water, not super clear. What I like to do is I like to look at the prop at the back of the boat, and if you can make out the prop, that's very, very good conditions. You know you have about a foot or two visibility. Today we have about two foot visibility, and that makes it ideal jigging conditions. You know, one of the other interesting things to talk about is that when the water does get dirty here in the Detroit River, it's the Canadian side that typically gets dirty first. There's a stronger current flow down the Canadian side. So if you're out here on the river and it starts to get dirty and you're on the Canadian side and it gets too dirty to fish, you can always scoot across to the Michigan side and, uh, and avoid some of that mud um, and fish the clearer water on the Michigan side. You know, the, uh, it's always been that way. The Canadian side gets dirty first and it takes a little bit longer for it to clear than the American side. Oh, that's a nice one. Good job, guys. It's a good looking fish right there, Jake. I think we finally caught a male. <laughs> Most there of the fish go. have been females, but I think you might have caught yourself a male there, son. Oh, that's a nice fish. Another nice male right there. We haven't caught a lot of males today, mostly females, and that's what you're gonna get earlier in the season. This is just getting to the second week of April, and that's what, what's in the river. And then the males follow like this, <laughs> and they're a lot of fun too. You get a lot of bites, man, it's a riot. If you want to get involved in doing a little bit of river jig fishing for walleyes, you're going to need the right kind of gear. Uh, definitely this is a spinning rod presentation in my opinion. Um, and I like a medium light rod. 
something about six to six and a half foot long is what I prefer. Um, I would match that up with a reel of a 25 or a 30 size. That's a relatively small spinning reel. And the most important part, the most important part of this setup is braided line. I feel very, very strongly that you have to have a low stretch line in order to really feel these bites, these subtle bites. And uh, there's a couple options that you can choose from. You can go to like a fuse type of line that's made out of microdyneema. But what I prefer is a Spectra product. It's an actual true braided line. And the line I have on here today is made by Maxima. It's an eight strand braid. Uh, has very much the same characteristics and feel of monofilament, but zero stretch. Um, and I'm using a 10 pound test and it's about two pound diameter. And from there, I've got to terminate it down to um, a fluorocarbon leader and I'm using a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader and that's what I've got my jig tied to. So that basic setup is what I consider to be a nearly ideal uh, vertical jigging rod for walleyes. You know, one of the good things about the Detroit River is finding spots to fish is never going to be difficult because there's always so many people here fishing. You're going to see the clusters of boats and the clusters of boats are going to concentrate on what I call community spots or places that routinely find fish. Now that's the good news. The bad news is you better be launching early in the day or you can find yourself waiting in line for an hour at any of the popular boat launches here. So get yourself out on the water about six o'clock in the morning and you'll miss a lot of the crowd. And uh, I think you'll have a much less stressful day on the water. Our segment, when we were fishing here in April, the water temperature was about 45 degrees, and that's a threshold. When the water is colder than 45 degrees, you're probably gonna be better suited by fishing with live bait, specifically minnows, and the minnow of choice here is the Emerald Shiner. Now, when the water gets a little bit warmer later in the month, say 45 to 50 degrees, soft plastics tend to, tend to be the dominant factor here. A lot of people will switch over and use plastic. We actually did both. We used plastic and tipped it with a minnow, and that was working good for us. We're gonna talk a little bit about jigs and soft plastics. Now, you can fish a jig just with a clean minnow and catch lots of fish in the Detroit River, but one of the more popular methods here is to add various different types of soft plastic. What I've got in here is just a brown plastic worm, affectionately referred to here locally as the Wyandotte worm. Then I put my minnow on, and more importantly than that, on top of it, I took a little tiny piece of the Wyandotte worm and I put it over top of the hook, and what happens is it creates kind of like a washer effect and it prevents that minnow from, from just coming off. Because what happens when you're jigging is your hook is gonna tear a hole in the minnow and then the minnow's just gonna flip off and you're gonna lose it anyway. So putting the plastic on, putting the minnow on, then putting a little piece of plastic on top of that to hold the minnow on really helps keep that bait down there. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival and by Motor Guide Electric Motors. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service and by Ontario's Algoma Country. That real. We're fishing out of a little boat today that's called the Starcraft Freedom. They come in a 16 and they also come in an 18. It's a utility boat. It's a very inexpensive boat. And as you can see, this one's working out very, very nicely for us for vertical jigging. The reason I like the Freedom is I can use it for a lot of different stuff. I use it for river fishing. I also use it for some hunting applications, small inland lakes, that type of stuff. The Freedom, very affordable, just a dynamite fishing boat. It's a solid fish jig. I haven't seen him yet. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah nice another, another good looking fish. That boy. There you go. Nice fish, Dad. I don't know if you noticed it when, the, when we were landing this fish, but it was actually foul hooked. And it's pretty common when you're jigging. What happens is I think these fish are, are swatting at the jig, they're trying to get the jig, and they miss it, but you feel that, and of course naturally you lift up as a, you know, when you're jigging, um, and then of course you end up inadvertently sticking them. Uh, whenever you have an opportunity where you catch a fish that's foul hooked, it has to go back, it's the law. Uh, we would let this one go anyway, but he's foul hooked, he's definitely going back. One of the things I would recommend is if you're motivated by eating size walleyes, you might want to come just a little bit later in the month of April. You're going to find much more active male fish than smaller fish. If you're motivated, on the other hand, by catching big fish like what we did in our episode, you're going to want to be towards the first part of the month. You're going to have a much better chance of catching big fish early in April. You know, a sonar is a key piece of equipment that's very necessary for vertical jigging. Not just for marking fish, but it also gives you bottom contours. And you can actually see it in spots like the Detroit River here today, spots where there's crackly rocks and stuff like that. It's really, really important to be able to see that because that's what holds fish. You also have your GPS, which gives you a plot trail. With your plot trail, you can use that as a reference for the next drift. Say you have a really good drift, when you go back up to do your next drift, you can see your plot trail, line up on it, and get really close to where you were before. So having sonar like this right here is very, very important when you're vertical jigging. You know, 
this morning when we started, it was pretty calm. So Jake was controlling the boat. He's fishing off the bow. I'm fishing off the back of the boat. And the reason we were doing that is because it spreads us out. We're covering more water. We can contact more fish. Now that the wind has picked up, we have much better control off the bow of the boat. So I'm not fishing on the back anymore. I've moved up and we're fishing side by side. That way it's a lot easier to keep our jigs vertical, maintain better contact with the bottom, and catch more fish. Come right there, Jakers. Man, he was just, I was, wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Those are the best ones, though. That's a nice fish. Good solid fish. Solid why you, fish. Why don't you step back this way and uh, solid come in here. Fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That is beautiful. Yeah. Jakers. I that's think that's the fish of the day right there, man. <laughs> that, that is, is a awesome. toad, toad, toad. That Look is at the awesome. belly on that girl. <laughs> oh, that's the reason you fish the Detroit River. It makes fishing around groups of people worthwhile. Man. <laughs> hey, my name is Mark Romanek. You've been watching Fishing 401. I hope you enjoyed our Detroit River adventure. If you get a chance, get down here in the month of April and catch yourself some of these. It's a lot of fun. Man, I love it. Closed captioning is provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Maxima Fishing Lines, the best line every time. Evinrude Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Sorry to interrupt Jake's little interview there, but you know, you call him. Oh, I just shook him off. Those are my favorite kind <laughs> that you cut. All right, back See what happens it. when you get cocky, you lose fish. <laughs>